Hi, my name's David Rubin. And I'm Barbara Fode, and we're your professors for media law. I've been teaching media law since about 1994. And I've been teaching this course so long, since 1971, <laughs> that many of the cases we're going to discuss with our students, uh, I was there to see develop. What do you like about teaching media law? Well, I like the fact that students often come to this course thinking, gee, this is going to be boring, it's going to be difficult, uh, I'm not going to like this course, I'm not going to do well in this course, and almost invariably my students leave this course and say, wow, I didn't realize that the law was so interesting, I really enjoyed these cases. Some of them even decide to go to law school, I'm not so sure I'm happy about that. Uh, but they leave it realizing that they learned some really valuable information and they need not have been afraid of it. Right. I think it could be kind of scary to you, but you, I think as you read the cases and as you go through, you'll be surprised at the number of different topics and the ways that it will intersect your work careers. I personally just find the law quite fascinating. Now, David hired me. He's the former dean at the Newhouse School. Tell them about your career. Well, I was dean at the Newhouse School between 1990 and 2008, and now I'm a member of the full-time faculty. Before that, I taught at NYU for 19 years, 1971 to 1990. I got my undergraduate degree at Columbia in actually American history with a minor in religion. I bet you didn't know I that. I didn't know no, that. And in, and in music. And I got a PhD in communications at Stanford, and it was after that that I then went off to NYU. On the professional side, I've written books, I've written a lot of magazine pieces, I'm really a writer at heart, but I've done a television show in central New York as the moderator of a public affairs talk show called uh, Ivory Tower, and I write a regular column for Syracuse.com. I started in nonprofit public relations and then moved into newspapers and finally found my home in television news. I was a producer in Detroit. It did a lot of special projects, a lot of politics and investigative reporting. I kind of burned out and teaching seemed kind of interesting to me. I needed an advanced degree, so I went to law school. I did pass the bar, but I haven't ever practiced. I really just love teaching. What will you be mm -hmm. teaching? Well, let me point out you're an Emmy Award winning <laughs> producer, you. so that's important to know. My part of the course will be I'm going to give an overview on the First Amendment and its uh, meaning and how it is limited. We're going to talk about commercial speech together. We'll talk about defamation, which you might know as libel. We'll talk about protecting national security, which is very much in the news these days and will probably be for a long, long time. We'll talk about the free press fair trial controversy, and we'll talk about whether journalists can protect anonymous sources. I'll be talking with you about corporate speech, also some more things about news gathering, about privacy and intellectual property. So what do you like about teaching media law? Well, I like that it's constantly in the news and that I'm quite certain as this particular course develops, there will be de uh, cases that are decided that will have relevance to what we're talking about. And so our students will realize, wow, this is not a dead subject. This is constantly evolving. It really is evolving a lot. I like that I can learn about how you, how you understand underneath why rules are the way they are and why the courts have decided what they have decided. And I also like giving you some practical tips for your career. We want to give you confidence in what you can do and can't do or when you need to confer with a lawyer. Tips for success? Uh, that this is not beyond you for sure, that it is not that difficult. Uh, I have taught this to juniors uh, in college and they do just fine with this. And so I think you'll also find that a lot of the, the stories as Barb mentions that are behind these cases are themselves fascinating and would make a really good read. And I too agree. Don't be scared about this. Yes, there's a lot of reading and sometimes it can be dense, but you can sort it out and you'll have the live session also to talk to your professor about questions that you might have. You'll be reading cases from the U.S. Supreme Court and it's kind of like a detective. You have to paw through them. They're a mystery to figure out what the court decided and why it did decide. So I'm ready to get started. Are you? I am. And sometimes, you know, the court doesn't even decide very That's clearly. True. So That's we have true. still have to figure it out. So, right. yep, we're ready to go. Let's go.